Good morning and welcome to online worship today at Colonial Heights United Methodist Church. I'm joining you from South Carolina as this has been a busy week for me and my family. Unfortunately, my mother has been hospitalized down here and is in the ICU. And so I ask for your prayers as she gets better and recovers from a emergency surgery. But as we're here together today, we remember that we are in prayer for one another. And so we want to lift up any prayers that we might have in our congregation this week. We also celebrate joys. I celebrate the fact that we had such an amazing turnout at our uh, trunk or treat this past week. If you were there, then you saw just how many people came out, and there were a lot of great things that happened as a result of that. We want to thank all of our volunteers, as well as everyone that gave uh, candy for that event, as we needed every bit of that candy uh, because it went a long way. We also want to remember that uh, coming up next Sunday, uh, we are going to be remembering those in our church who have passed away in the last year, and that's through All Saints. So you're welcome to join us in person or online as we remember those faithful people that have done wonderful things and have served the Lord. We want to remember them, and we also want to show our love and support for their families. So you won't want to miss next Sunday's worship. You also won't want to miss next Sunday afternoon because Robert Ray's Gospel Mass is going to be performed by several choirs, including uh, folks from Colonial Heights United Methodist Church, under the direction of Lee Whitson, our choir director's husband, Jason. And that's going to be in our sanctuary at 3 o'clock. We hope you'll come out and join us. We also plan to record that wonderful concert and be able to share that with you online as well. So as we begin this time together this morning, as we think about the things that we want to be in prayer for, the situation in the Middle East, people in our lives, those in our community, our brothers and sisters in Maine, the list goes on and on. We come now to pray to God, a God who hears our prayers. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Would you pray with me? Thank you, O Lord, that we have an opportunity this week to come together. Thank you for the opportunity to share what's on our hearts, to share our concerns, to share the things that burden us. We come to you, O Lord, asking for you to hear our prayers. Be with those right now who are suffering. Be with those right now who are going through unimaginable uh, tragedies. Those who are going through unimaginable situations. We pray, Lord, that you would comfort them. Bring comfort to your people as we seek to understand why tragedies happen. As we seek to understand why there can be so much evil in the world. We pray where there are tears. We pray for strength. Where there's uncertainty, we pray for hope. And where there is a lack of love, we pray that those who follow you can use actions of love to be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we turn to you now and we pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning, I'm going to take just a brief look at some scripture and share just a few reflections with you. Um, as I said earlier, it's been a busy week, but uh, it's a very important scripture, and it's a very important passage of uh, that Christians should be paying attention to um, often. It's Matthew 22, verses 34 through 46. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, an expert in the law, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The word for us, the people. Amen. Here we are back again uh, with Pharisees and Sadducees that are trying to stump Jesus. They are trying to catch him into saying something, just like last week's passage. Uh, and they're trying to force him to do something that's going to uh, either delegitimize the things that he's saying or uh, cause him to get arrested. And um, these are different groups. We said last week there were the Pharisees and the Herodians. This week it's the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're all there. And just like many different churches, just like many different groups, sometimes we can be divided by a simple question. And uh, something that divided these groups uh, were many differences, but one of the things that divided these groups was really the definition of what is the greatest commandment. And uh, just like churches today, we can be divided on a particular issue that causes us to no longer be together. And here is Jesus asked this question by them. What is the greatest commandment? And this is a tough question, right? Uh, if I were to ask you, what is the greatest commandment? Now, you might quote the scripture here, uh, but we might have a little bit of a different perspective on what is the, the greatest commandment. Certainly, what is the greatest value in this world? What is the greatest uh, goal uh, that uh, we might have for our lives? That might look a little bit different for you and for the person next to you. Uh, but Jesus is asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he says to them something they should be familiar with, they are familiar with. It's the Shema prayer. It says the beginning, which says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And we find that in Deuteronomy. And the Jewish people were told to wear this on their hearts uh, and to uh, in the mornings recite it, in the evenings recite it, it was to be a foundation of their life, um, loving the Lord and loving God. But then Jesus says something else, right? He says, and the second is like this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And it really is an amazing response because it all goes back to love, loving God, and loving neighbor. Now, as you think about those two things, loving God and loving neighbor, what does that mean to you? What does that look like in your faith? What does that look like in your neighbor's faith? What does that look like in the church? Um, I said before a few weeks ago that we should be able to pinpoint all that we do uh, in our ministry, in our programs, our events, Everything we do as a church should go back to that question of, of, of the big picture, making disciples of Jesus Christ, but more so loving God and loving neighbor. And if that is the foundation for your life, and if that's the foundation for our life together in our Christian journey, then it is a solid foundation. It is a foundation where there is going to be uh, emphasis placed on what's important. And I think the foundation that Jesus was trying to remind the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he's trying to remind us of, is that loving God and loving neighbor begins with love. And not just any kind of love, but agape love. Uh, agape love is that selfless, sacrificial love uh, that uh, is going to love no matter what. And that is the kind of love that God has for us. That is the kind of love that Christ has for us. And we're going to see this because in just a few chapters later, 
Where are we going to find Jesus? Offering himself up on a cross to the world, demonstrating that agape love, that true love. So it's about God. It's about neighbor. But it's really all about love. And we must have that. And we must strive to have that. And right now, uh, we are faced in this world with a lot of dilemmas. Um, there are a lot of situations and there are a lot of places where there's anything but love. Um, the opposite of love is a lot of different things. Uh, but the opposite of love in many ways is uh, hate. And we see that. Um, hate is nowhere part of the greatest commandment. Despising one another is nowhere part of the greatest commandment. Conflict, and we can be in conflict and love sometimes, but conflict is something that usually does not lead to love. And so we must be careful as we look around in the world, as we look around in our lives, and we think about this great commandment. What does it mean to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and to love our neighbor. Jesus says that on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And it's so true. If we go back and we read the Torah, if we read the law, if we read and hear from the prophets as they proclaimed uh, often uh, difficult messages to societies that were not demonstrating love by any change or any chance, then we find that this to be true. Love God and love your neighbor. So my hope for us this week is that we would chew on that and that we would think about that. Because next Sunday, we uh, will come to the table in the church. We will also be remembering uh, those in our, our church family that have passed on. And many of these are people that showed us how to love one another. They were neighbors of great love. Uh, they were neighbors that taught us what it means to love God. And so it's important for us to think about this passage as we also think about our loved ones who have gone on before us. So next week, as we gather, I hope this will be on our mind. Let us remember to love God and love our neighbor. Let's have a prayer. Lord, just a few short reflections today as we go forth. We're reminded that sometimes less is more. And Lord, as the Pharisees and Sadducees tried to follow hundreds of commandments and laws, Jesus reminded them to remember that the law, the prophets, can be traced to a simple foundation of loving you and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Help us to simplify sometimes what we make so complicated when it comes to our faith, when it comes to our uh, biblical understanding, when it comes to our discipleship. It really is simple when we trace it back to your love. Help us, O oh God, to have that love as we go this week. In the name of Jesus, amen.
Bought my 